These rules are also open just right after sleep. Hi guys and welcome to Metamaze YouTube channel. My name is Ali Narendra and I am again back with another video. Uh, which frequently a question uh, which people tend to keep on asking uh, either in forums like Twitter hours or maybe even Google is the question of whether CF is actually worth it in India. Right? So I thought of uh, quickly making a very short video, uh, maybe trying to investigate the fact that whether it's actually worth it or not, if it's a valid question. Because there are a lot of qualifications which have come from you know, other countries. Uh, which obviously have not uh, performed as well as uh, they have performed in the parent company. Right? So, uh, and, and same goes to CFA because CFA is also belongs to US. So we want to investigate whether this actually gives you any job opportunities in India or not. So let's get started right to it. So the first aspect I'm going to be looking at uh, the whole popularity uh, of a program. Uh, the reason why I want to discuss this is because uh, you know a lot of global qualifications which did come to India, uh, although the numbers did not grow. So it's not that just because in India there's a lot of population, so all the qualifications and designations will work. It's not quite the case, right? So let's if you look at the qualification growth of CFA overall globally, then you will see that of course China leads with the highest number of charter holder members. Now these are members. Have already cleared the exams, they're paying the membership fees. So the actual number might actually be higher because there are a lot of charter holders uh, who might not be paying the membership fees on a regular basis, right? Followed by actually the US. So actually, the qualification which comes from US itself does not lead uh, in terms of numbers, but it's actually China, right? Uh, and 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 you have to understand that it is pretty much correlated with the growth in capital markets. China's capital market has obviously grown over the years and hence the need to learn such specialized qualification. And you would be shocked to know that after this, it's actually India which leads uh, the amount of charter holder members who pay their fees. Uh, so in terms of an overall popularity, uh, you can say a ranking third largest country with the number of members uh, of CF Institute. So in terms of the qualification growth, it has been fantastic because the growth has been about 20% every year. Just to give you a little bit of more numbers, which probably will not come in this slide, is that close to about, I would say about 1,50,000 to 2 lakh students actually prepare for the CFL level in exam. But out of that, there will be somewhere close to about 20,000 to 25,000 students who actually sit for the level 1 exams every year in every attempt. Now that we have about four attempts, so that you can just do the maths. Right? Now, let's look at salary growth level wise. Okay, so uh, whenever people try to look at a qualification in India spe specifically, they've got into the habit of uh, you know, trying to understand qualification in terms of the entire course getting completed. But that's not really the case. You can get jobs even after level one. So what I've done is I've tried to segregate salary uh, structure across three levels and let's see what it looks like so if you look at level one itself the best case scenario if you uh, if you have been skilling side by side if you have been working on your understanding your interest and you land up in companies like this so eight lakhs is the best case right so average case after level one is about five to six lakhs there are a lot of companies which give five to six lakhs in terms of research jobs after level one itself right the worst case is I mean, you don't uh, get up into premium companies. Even then, the you know the worst case scenario is three point five. It's a very good start still because three point five. There are a lot of qualifications that people do in India. Uh, you know, qualifications like MBA, and they still do not get a package of three point five. Like you're not getting it just like up level, right? So let's look at CFL level two. The best case. No, no, there's not much transition between level and level two apart from the fact that you cleared one more exam, right? So there might not be a big difference uh, and, and the big assumption that I'm taking for the salary progression across levels is that you have started working from level 1 and that's highly recommended because if you're waiting level, till level 3 to complete all the levels and then look for a job then you missed out so because in that case you will have to start from level 1 again right I mean in terms of the salary because you have to understand that in terms of the in terms of the content requirement for working in the industry 
as a CFA level one candidate, you already have knowledge much higher than probably even an MBA finance from IIMs, okay, uh, or a CA, enough qualified to get a job into the investment industry. After that, the progression has a parallel effect. That means uh, part of the effect will come from the fact that you're progressing across levels, but part of the effect is obviously going to come with experience, right? So not a lot of progression out here, but at level three, you've already gained about two and a half to three years of experience. Now that is where the game changes because as soon as you complete level three and you have three years of experience, your best case scenario if you have stayed in companies like Crystal and if you have got into companies like Crystal, then your salaries can go upwards of 15 lakhs and above. The average case minimum is about 12 lakhs if you are getting into tier two companies like eValue Serve, uh, like Equity, Knowledge Partners, like Transparent Value. 12 lakhs is a very decent salary and pretty doable. And the worst case scenario is still 10 lakhs, right? So uh, the good part about CF program is that after each level, you can uh, have some progression. You don't really have to complete all the levels to gain and reap all the benefits, right? So one of the biggest advice I give all the CFA candidates is do not keep that mentality of pursuing CFA program as a full-time course. Because people usually will say that, okay, after graduation, I will just do CFA. Right? That will be not as productive as if you take up any finance job, whether even if it's not very related to CFA funding, it's fine. Even if it's a back office operations job, it's okay. You still need to start working because the amount of years of experience that you put in across progressing through levels adds a lot more value in your progression rather than just completing the exam. Okay. So areas of work after CFA level one. So if we look at uh, each level and the opportunities that you get. So if I look at straightforward, the, the main place of getting opportunities to work would be investment banking. Now investment banking, I just do not mean mergers and acquisition. It means an array of services, which includes sell side research. It includes buy side research, it includes mergers and acquisition research. Uh, as an associate because you tend to get the designation as an associate which is the lower most lowest most position in an m and team but you can still enter as an analyst uh, in mergers and acquisition and of course back in middle office roles which you should be able to get hands down without much effort right so by back office and middle office i mean to say trade settlements reconciliation all these profiles you should be able to clear very easily after level right now let's look at areas of work after cfa level one in some other areas not research right so wealth management is again an area where cfas would be very eligible to work in this field and to do some quality work in wealth management trust me wealth management is not always about sales because as a wealth manager you have much more power compared to even research or even a fund manager because you have access to the capital of the customer which can be put into various sessions right in fact 70 percent of the cfh holders are actually wealth managers so a beautiful career uh, and in fact in the longer term you also have opportunity to start your own practice and you run your own wealth management firms and uh, so the first role that you can get into is an investment advisor in which you basically advise clients based on the levels of clients that you have it might be an HNI client, it might be a retail client, it might be a small client, doesn't matter. But the experience of advising people on how to create portfolios is invaluable, very relevant for getting the charter hold, uh, the charter as well, right? Wealth advisor would be somewhere, you could say a senior role to an investment advisor, but then you are not just talking about investments, but you're talking about estate planning, you're talking about transitioning, wealth, you're talking about reducing the risk overall of his portfolio and usually wealth management is done for uh, bigger clients which I can decide. and of course uh, uh, you know in banking in wealth you also have roles inter-levels roles in relationship so all these roles are pretty good uh, you know after CFA level one even if you're getting it you should take it so that you gain real industrial experience all the experience does not have to be just research okay uh, let's look at other areas apart from the direct areas where you can work after CFL1 is also in private equity. Now these opportunities might be rare, lesser, niche, but still they exist. And private equity also hires a lot of analysts for you know, creating financial models, doing research. So uh, in fact, you, you can also get opportunities in real estate valuation. Companies like Gallagher, Mohan, all these companies uh, do a lot. In fact, KPMG, PwC, all of the also do 
uh, you know, alternative investment valuation as a service to a lot of US companies, right? Uh, hedge fund analyst, uh, again, it depends upon which kind of hedge fund you're talking about. You might uh, want to look, you can get hedge fund analyst job also in India, also for you can be working for a US based company. NFP, in a financial planning analysis, which is basically a corporate finance role in which you're working inside the business and helping the company in planning, budgeting, and forecasting, right? So these roles are also open just right after CFA level, right? Now let's look at after completing all the CFA levels, considering that you've already gained three years of experience, what newer opportunities can come. So after experience, now you can move out from sell-side research to buy-side research. When I say buy-side research, it means to say that I am inside a fund, which means let's say I am inside a mutual fund doing research to invest the capital, right? Second is directly fund management. Maybe you are able to get roles of managing a certain scheme in a fund, uh, let's say whether it's India, whether it's outside, doesn't matter. But yes, you can get into fund management as well. And also you can get into uh, as a manager in hedge funds if your previous experience has been pretty strong, right? So now the last question which uh, arises is CFA versus other qualifications for investment careers. Now, if you just, you know, broadly try to look at in terms of investment careers, uh, if you look at the credibility CFA in investment has the highest uh, credibility. Fresher salaries, obviously it is lower than tier one MBA and it always will be, but it is higher than CA in investment quality. So you have to understand the tier one MBA salaries are higher because of course you are also investing a lot of money because you are investing close to 20 lakhs and you are losing out on two years uh, since you are just studying for MBA. Uh, the cost out here is pretty low. The difficulty is high in all the qualifications because all of these are credible qualifications. Progressions in investment as a CFA candidate will be very good out here. It will be good out here and it will be moderate in tier one MBA. The reason being MBA is not a specialized qualification in investment. So, in fact, there are a lot of uh, MBA candidates who will pursue CFA, uh, you know, in their first year and second year itself just because of its value in investment value, right? So, the last question to answer is Is it worth it in India? My answer is every minute, every exam, every level, every question. And every penny which has been spent on CFA exam has been worth it because it will not just, uh, you know, the career wise, I've already told you the, the kind of benefits that you get, but also in terms of your understanding of a personal finance also goes to a level. Even if you start your own businesses, you will have a, another level of understanding of profitability on what to do, what not to do. So that was a short video on uh, CFA's value in India. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put it in the comment box and I'll answer for sure as soon as possible. And if you like the video, share the video and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you again next week.